Quinn Snyder. Cushion. Um, I thought Derek's offensive rebounding late in the game was was crucial, and then you know Royce's ability to to defend without fouling, you know, to maintain his aggressiveness and um, you know and be disciplined at the same time. You mentioned Favors. Uh, you you seem to play him more without playing the big guys together. What did you see that you played him down the stretch there? Well, you know, we're, we're always you know going to play the guys that we think are giving us the best chance to win. And, you know, Rudy had done a heck of a job during the course uh, of the game as well. Um, you know, there was an opportunity when they were small um, with Tucker in the game that, um, you know, we're lucky that we have, you know, both those guys are terrific players. So, um, you know, you're never, you never know decisions like that. Um, but I, what I do know is that you know, both of those two guys and whoever else we play, we played, you know, Joe didn't finish the game tonight. You know, there's times when Ricky hasn't finished. There's times when Jay hasn't finished um, down the line. So, you know, I thought that our team's ability, Tabo came in and gave us really good minutes, um, particularly at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And that's, you know, that's, that, that's the, you know, the definition of the team when you put the group in front of yourself. and. You know, we have a lot of guys that are willing to do that. Some of them did it tonight. Um, some of them will have to do it next game. Um, that's just the, you know, that's what makes a team, a team good, it makes a team a team. Donovan Mitchell back to back 30 plus games in games three and four. And in the fourth quarter tonight, outscoring the Rockets all by himself with his 19 hitting. Six out of 12 and three out of five from deep. And again, the Rockets missing all 13 of their threes in the fourth quarter and 14 straight overall, bridging the third <coughs> and fourth quarters. The question now is how do you, when you're Utah and you go back to a place where you got run out of the gym in the first two games, now how do you bottle up what you did in game three and four and make it competitive in game five and try to steal one there? Because the, the best teams, have the shortest memories and they don't realize that they got blown out in Houston. They remember that they're like, oh, we just got this and this is how we've got it. We, we won this way here tonight. This is successful. Those other things didn't work because as, as Chuck and I, Chuck says it more than my, I do, the NBA is about adjustments you know, from game to game. There was an adjustment in game four and now they say, oh, that works. And when you give NBA players a light at the end of the tunnel, they feel better about themselves. They feel good about themselves. And as Shaq just said, man, if we win game, if we get this one, it's 3-2. And you know we're not losing in the crib, so now it's going to be game seven. So guys start thinking the delusion of grandeur uh, starts to set in. And I disagree with Kenny because... Uh, you disagree with the point yeah. that I make that I, you always say? Yeah. Listen. <laughs> Why you disagree no, with no, yourself? No, no, no. So don't say you disagree with me. done that before. Because I said you no. say it all the time and I agree no, with you. Is, okay. About adjustments. The Rockets don't make adjustments. The Rockets play one way. They just was all. I'm talking about Utah. No, no, I'm no, no. It has nothing to do with Utah. The Rockets, the, the good and the bad with the Rockets, they don't make adjustments. Mike D'Antoni don't make no adjustments. The reason they lost this game, they had a, a, I think the biggest lead they had was maybe four or six. Five. Five. Right there. And then they go 0 for 14. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Four. They shot 14 threes, 13 threes in one quarter and missed them all. Chuck's right. They're going to be they, like. They, listen. No, I'm not talking about the Rockets. Know, I'm talking about, talking about Utah's stuff. adjustment. Utah's adjustment. You're feeling good about yourself. Feeling good about yourself. Yeah. Well, listen, okay, I'm listen. just saying. It, 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 listen, great win by Utah. I love the way they competed. But they were down in this game, and the Rockets missed 13 straight threes in the fourth quarter. And, but that's the thing about the Rockets. They're not going to change. I remember last year we were in Houston when they 20, missed 30. 27 in a 27 row. 27 in a row. And you're like, like, aren't they going to go to the basket at some point? They're not going to go to the basket. The Rockets, like Mike D'Antoni, he's one of the greatest offensive minds ever. He going to give that ball to James Harden. He going to score. Step back, or they gonna shoot threes. They ain't gonna make no adjustments. That's the way they play. I uh, have to agree with Chuck. Uh, Utah, they came out and played very inspired. Plus 30 on the boards. Uh, no, plus 30 in the paint. Plus 17 on the board. But the Rockers, they're gonna say, 
We didn't shoot the ball well in the fourth quarter. We know what we have to do. So if if uh, Utah could out hustle Houston and Houston can. What do you think? Hu- what do you think Utah is saying? Not the Rockets. We know the Rockets saying we up three one. Utah don't is win. saying we played better defense. We we you know we came out. We left it all on the line. Donovan finally hit some shots. Jay Crowder finally showed up. If you can get those guys to match that and get Houston to miss all those shots like they did, they have a shot. But you know Houston's not. They're not worried. No, I didn't say they worry. I'm just saying what Utah's thinking. Yeah. Crowder had uh, 19 points, 